टाइम पे नहीं आते कोई भी हेलो हेलो कैन यू हियर मी चेतन यस एम आई ऑडिबल टू यू हिमांशु यस 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 यू आई कैन हियर यू Okay, okay. Just five minutes. Just five minutes. Thank can you. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. You are absolutely audible. Very clear. Okay, okay, okay all right. Okay. Just five minutes. Five minutes. No problem. Okay. okay, thanks.
দেখুন so very uh, good morning one and all and uh, happy world veterinary day to all the veterinarians here in the auditorium uh, world veterinary day is generally celebrated on uh, the last saturday of uh, april month uh, to give a brief about uh, what world veterinary day is all about is the world veterinary day is celebrated on the last saturday to appreciate the efforts and increase awareness about uh, veterinarians and their role in animal health welfare and public health the event is observed to honor and recognize the tireless effort and perseverance uh, the veterinarians put to safeguard health and ensure safety of both animal and the populace world veterinary day also brings the global veterinary community all together in one place and help them in getting proper assistance the world veterinary day was founded on april 29 2000 by the initiative of world veterinary association since then every year the last saturday is celebrated as world veterinary day and it has a different themes that are selected as a particular that puts a stress on particular different aspects of veterinary medicine this year's theme of for world veterinary day 2023 is promoting diversity equity and inclusiveness in the veterinary profession this is dr john gamgi he is he was a veterinary uh, veterinarian in edinburgh veterinary college in 1863 gangi was the first person who was well traveled and thus uh, requested all the european veterinarians to have a meeting to discuss the issues related to veterinary medicine this first meeting was later started being called as the first congress of international veterinary association later on subsequently in the 15th congress meeting of indian veterinary association it was decided that there is a need of a global veterinary organization and thus avma was born that is uh, world veterinary association in 1959 at madrid the event was initiated with the aim of giving attention to animal health and welfare along with the increasing awareness about public health and environment at present world veterinary association which has coined this term of world veterinary day is works in cooperation with many prominent organization worldwide like who and world health organization also so this was in brief about world uh, veterinary day uh, so it's it also shares a beautiful bond about it emphasizes the beautiful bond between animals and mankind so without further ado i would like to start the program the uh, then we have a speaker among us dr chetan patond uh, he is a wildlife veterinarian dr chetan patond is a is a young and dynamic wildlife veterinarian and expert in veterinary surgery and radiology he was associated with pens tiger reserve and maharashtra state forest department for many years amalgamating rich adventurous experiences of treatment surgery crime investigation in wildlife 
he he has worked in many human wildlife conflict cases and have solved them successfully he has been felicitated by maharashtra state forest department many a times dr chetan is a honored veterinarian veterinary surgeon in wildlife department at present he is working as a veterinary surgeon at sardar patel zoological park ahmedabad gujarat so without further ado i would request dr chetan patond to kindly give his talk chetan am i audible yes sir yeah I'm sharing please please the day is you you can start your presentation please am i audible yes you are uh can you see my screen there no not yet please share it now yeah we can please go ahead okay um my name is dr chetan patun i am a veterinary surgeon at uh, sardar patel zoological park ekta nagar gujarat i have been working in the field of wildlife wildlife since last 8 uh, years and i have been associated with the penge forest tiger penge uh, penge tiger reserve and maharashtra forest department for 6 uh, years 5 6 years can you uh, just uh, full screen it presentation mode now yeah 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 please please talk okay okay uh so i i am here to discuss and talk about the uh, wildlife of the wildlife veterinarian the wildlife veterinarian the role of wildlife veterinarian are um, multidisciplinary and there are multiple roles wildlife veterinarian is a physician is a surgeon nutritionist anesthesiologist pathologist pharmacologist researcher scientist public health worker zoonosis worker a teacher a biologist and also uh, animal keeper and a nursing staff and also acts as a administrator administrator so as a wildlife vet we our role is defined by the situation and the condition where we put in there are multiple roles and roles is it's designed as per the situation and the condition of the animals and the environment as a human resource we as the veterinarian uh, we are the veterinarian we are uh, doing rescue and rehabilitation rehabilitation work we are also working with the human wildlife conflict mitigation measures we are also doing infant care and rewilding and rehabilitation we are also doing necropsy forensic analysis wildlife crime investigation we are also doing a professional work of disease diagnosis disease treatment disease prevention and uh, also we are giving our inputs in sop guide, sop standard operating procedure management guidelines and policy making while doing all this job we come across the various challenges because as a wildlife veterinarian i have more than 100 species of birds animal and reptiles which need to be treated which need to be attended species specific requirements are way variable from one species to another species we have multiple disciplines in itself we we are, we have different medicine surgery anesthesia for the mammals it's it is different for the reptiles it is different for the birds infrastructure facilities are less at the moment and we are still trying to build up as as good as possible education and awareness among for the wildlife vet among the wildlife vet is again uh, about the wildlife vet in public is less that is also a big challenge and we cannot go to the other people unless and until we have good uh collaboration and communication with other institute we have different species of animal to to be treated we are treating a, a rat having a weight of 50 g and a rhinoceros having a weight of 2000 kg those rates are variable feeding requirements are variable nutritional requirements are variable space requirements are variable each and every species has unique requirement so whenever we are uh, uh treating these animals in wildlife whether it is in the free range free ranges whether it is it is in the captivity the species specific requirements and their um, overall um, management aspects are totally different at the present wildlife veterinarians are mainly dealing with the human wildlife conflict mitigation 
wildlife crime investigation, necropsy, and forensic analysis. Other than the professional job of treatment, surgery, diagnostic, deworming, vaccination, etc. Whenever we, as a vet, go in the human wildlife condition, it is way more important to us to have a safety of our own people as well as the animal. It is very different from the human medicine, human surgery. Whenever we approach the animals in the field, we, ha we have to go through the various procedures of patrolling the fields, jungles, for the searching uh, and monitoring of the animal. We use camera trapping, DNA analysis tool, direct indirect sighting by villagers and gazers for the identification of the individual animal, various methods. Because if we, if we capture the wrong individual at that place, that the life of that individual will go in the captivity and we may lose the species. If, if in case of the female, if we capture the wrong female of the any carnivore like tiger, leopard, or lion, the next few generations of that species will go in the captivity. So we don't want to take a chance on any uh, animal without identification or uh, monitoring. Monitoring. Generally in the field, we use DNA tools, blood, and we regularly collect samples uh, from the scat, from the uh, keels, and the and the other samples like hair samples for the DNA analysis. And we have collaboration with the institutes, which give us result whether the animal is uh, male or female and the species of the animal. While doing the patrolling, we have a huge area, 150 square kilometer, 200 square kilometer area, which has to be monitored every day. And our teams. And our human resources from the forest department, they do their best to go to each and every corner of the area and they make sure to monitor the animal and make sure the safety of those animals. Wildlife rescue cases are different, but still, I, will, I would like to share the common cases which are fascinating as well as dangerous while treatment, while capturing, while monitoring. Snare injuries in tigers, this is the very common very common uh, cases for the wildlife veterinarian. I am sharing the cases of tigers at the moment because I have the uh, multiple cases of tiger snare injuries. Similar things happened with the leopard, sloth bears, and uh, lions and all other species of the animals and birds and reptiles. Here is the case of the tiger having a snare, snare on the foreleg. And this animal needs attention to capture the need attention in terms of capture, release of that snare, and treatment. Chemical immobilization is a very commonly used tool in wildlife capture. We use tranquilization gun, also called as syringe projectors, for the capture of these animals. After capture of these animals, we go for the treatment, treatment, surgeries, and all other procedures for the benefit of the animal and for the health management of the animal. Monitoring and assessment of vital parameters and, and recovery is the foremost important in case of tranquilization. First, operative monitoring in the forest. We use very high frequency antenna, camera traps, machan for direct sighting, indirect sighting to make sure that animal is doing well in the forest area without disturbing their normal routine pattern or behavior. We use camera traps. We use a very high frequency antenna. We use satellite scholar to do the so. This is the second case of the young subadult male tiger having the uh, clutch wire snare, uh, multifilament stainless steel clutch wire uh, snare on the back. This animal could not do hunting or killing of the prey for almost for two weeks. An animal was lethargic. So at that moment, we thought that the animal was unable to hunt the prey. So we recommended to capture the animal. When we captured this individual, snare was almost deep penetrated up to vertebral column and animal was unable to walk and because it was in the painful condition so in such condition wildlife veterinarians need to interfere and in intervene to for to safeguard the animal and to make the animal is, to make sure the animal is healthy so we generally tranquilize again the animal we do all dressing cleaning surgical approaches followed by we put here a, a radio collar on the animal to monitor the movement of this animal. When this animal, you can see a, a red dot that is the animal and the green dot is the birthplace of the animal. And when it 
we removed the clutch while it started moving toward the telangana it was this this is the picture of the tiger and uh, from the tipeshwar wildlife sanctuary near the adilabad and tiger started moving toward the telangana state and after proper monitoring and uh, use of uh, satellite tools and monitoring tools we found that animal was not comfortable going toward the telangana side so it started moving toward the western maharashtra side to find the proper prey proper jungle and proper mate this is the technology actually we are using nowadays to monitor the movement of the animal and the health status of the animal this is the third case of the snare the female where you can see a huge wound on the neck snare was there on the neck for one year animal was very emaciated it was not it could not hunt the uh, prey and attempts are made, multiple attempts we made to capture that animal but we could not capture that animal finally the animal was tranquilized at the last moment where it was not unable it was unable to move why after tranquilization we moved animal to the nearby uh, uh, place for the treatment but we could not save the animal while treating this animal we observed that animal had a snare on the neck which was there for a, one year the point of discussion in my view is that we could not save this female we just we could not save this female is the one thing and we could if we could have saved this female we could have saved the next four to five generation of this female but just a single snare can do this much of harm that's why we generally prefer to go for the intervention in in such cases other than that veterinary wildlife veterinarian or veterinary surgeon go for the multiple surgery this is the vulture it's a endangered species and we found a lacerated wound on the wing of the uh, vulture and a vulture was unable to uh, fly if and if such bird big bird cannot fly from the ground if this bird doesn't fly from the ground it, it will be attacked by uh, other prey or stray dog or some other animals in that case this animal will lose uh, lose the life and in case of female we will lose the future generation of this uh, uh, bird in such cases surgical interventions are required and surgical intervention uh, successfully restore the functions of the wing and we could see the animal flying flying back to the, its natural habitat prosthetic leg in black. we have another in, we have also invented uh, the use of prosthetic legs in birds we successfully used prosthetic leg in black eyed and golden pheasant it was the birds and uh, these birds actually were unable to bear weight on the single leg because of the compensatory compensatory weight mechanism so now because of the use of such technologies of prosthetic leg and techniques of the prosthetic leg they can roam around freely without any disturbance crocodile as a wildlife vet we have we have to deal with the multiple species this is the crocodile with the nasal cavity perforation and we had to do this kind of surgery in the animal to prevent the uh, bone necrosis and infection this is the first kind of surgery we did in the crocodile to close the nasal nasal cavity perforation wound we have exotic wildlife the ring tail lemur and here i uh, you can appreciate the corneal suturing and surgery of eye surgery of the uh, ring tail lemur orthopedic surgeries are very common uh, in wildlife because of the automobile accident then poacher's trap and uh, snare injuries and clutch wire injuries so we have the case of the tiger where we performed orthopedic surgery we perform as good we we had to perform the amputation of the few digits followed by the surgery uh, surgical reconstruction to give the uh, normal life to the animal this is another case of the uh, fever bone fracture in leopard where we did orthopedic surgery after proper radiographic examination we can see proper alignment of bone post surgery here we have another species of like frog bear around us and there are multiple cases of automobile accident against the rope snare injuries and trap injuries in the snare 
we as a wildlife vet we have to deal with this kind of cases also another case of automobile accident and the mandible and because of that there is a mandible fracture in the indian rock python because of our consistent efforts for almost for 6 months we could restore the fracture and the other tissues in this uh, reptile and we could release this reptile in the wild after almost efforts of 6 months fracture fixation in bull bull uh, blue bull is another case surgical management of tibia fibula fracture in black buck it is very difficult to capture herbivora because herbivores actually they go in the cardiac myopathy or capturing myopathy as soon as we capture them to give proper anesthesia to give proper um, medication to give proper surgical management it is a wildlife veterinarian has to be prepared for each and everything to avoid all the consequences or the uh, um, points which which like uh, uh, infection and all other things in such kind of surgery so these animals are way more delicate than the carnivores like uh, tiger and leopard and sloth bears and um, lion and it is very difficult to manage uh, uh, treatment injuries and all uh, kind of um, health issues in this animals radiographic examination it is a, it is another tool we commonly use in uh, uh, wildlife health management activities wildlife men- health management activities whether it is in the free ranging or in the captivity they are more or less similar the radiographic examination of the rhino is way more different than the radiographic examination of the reptile family and the herbivore family and the carnivore family because animal is very aggressive and animal is huge and it can uh, crush the people who are working around and uh, with a single aggressive stick so it is uh, way more uh, different for us to take all this examination like radiographic examination ultrasonography in animal than the humans the wildlife veterinarians also do with the post mortem examination and sampling post mortem examinations are important to know the cause of the death and to know the status of the zoonotic diseases contagious diseases in the animals sampling is another tool which is used for the um, diagnosis of the diseases of various origin and the and also for the dna analysis so we generally send samples to the institute which are performing all these tests and gross findings and the major findings we uh, um, we measure at our own uh, places biological sampling and laboratory analysis is very common for the wildlife we use post mortem findings in for the uh, and uh, histopathological findings we use rapid diagnostic kits in all animals but still we are lacking because we we are lacking uh, in few diseases we need to improve our uh, uh, disease diagnosis rapid disease diagnosis uh, uh, data and uh, techniques for the better and early health uh, management uh, activities we have as a wildlife vet another responsibility of internship training program of the young veterinarian and forest department staff training to for the uh, uh, human wildlife conflict mitigation as a as a veterinarian i would like to uh, uh, take this opportunity to um, uh, discuss the role of animal biotechnology in wildlife conservation the animal biotechnology definitely is uh, doing very well in the domestic animals but we as a wildlife veterinarian on the wildlife veterinary day would like to invite wild- animal biotechnology uh, human resources for the various uh, purposes such as disease investigation embryo transfer technology and cry preservation in the uh, spe- uh, endangered species of the animals zoonotic and public health concept new development of new drug vaccines and uh, uh, therapies and education and awareness and of course one health program at present as a field veterinarian uh, as a field veterinarian we have a requirement of dna analysis of putrefied and decomposed carcass that is specifically for the species or sex of the animal develop and these kind of dna analysis of techniques of the uh, carcasses can be used very effectively in the field where there is a lack of laboratories if we can as a uh, wildlife veterinarian 
i need all these kids to use in the field where the laboratories are far away from us at, at present whenever we sam send sample to the um, regional forensic laboratories or any uh, other laboratories in the state and in the country it takes seven to seven days to one month to get the results then it is very difficult for us to get actually the all the um, uh, points for the conclusion of the case in that case if animal biotechnology department if they can help us in doing all uh, dna analysis of the petrified carcasses and decomposed carcasses that will be way more help for the wildlife veterinarian who are working in the field second development of rapid toxicological examination method at present again whenever we um, uh, collect the sample and the preserve the sample we need at least a month to get the results of those samples if animal by through animal biotechnology if we if we discuss and we determine to um, make such um, methods of rapid toxicological examination that will be again useful for the whole world and whole country to um, to solve the cases at ease rapid this is investigation technique is already available but still we need to do more work in them an innovative kind uh, wildlife crime investigation techniques and wildlife forensic studies at present whatever whatever the techniques we are using all those techniques are time consuming and uh, old age we need uh, to focus on the innovative wildlife crime investigation technique and wildlife forensic studies for the better uh, results and early results of the cases requirements at the field in case of toxicology i would like to discuss this topic at this platform we may come across some solution in uh, in future at present we have very high cases of the toxicity and toxic uh, and, uh, toxicity wildlife uh, in wildlife people farmer grazers they put poisons and toxins on the carcasses carcasses of for the carnivores and for the on the grass for the herbivores the most and in the and, and even in the water sources they put uh, toxins or poisons in such cases the most common cases are of urea poisoning in case of herbivores heavy metal poisoning in case of herbivores like spotted deer sambar indian gaur and all other animals and very common um, uh, uh, the toxins or the poisons used on for the carnivore are organophosphate organochlorine zinc phosphate cypermethrin delta methrin amitri these all insecticide or pesticide are used in animals for the treatment of the ectoparasites and as a insecticide in the farm while using in the farm or while using on the animal a portion of that um portion of that is used by the farmers or the grazers or the other people for the wildlife crime activities wildlife crime could be um, could be uh, um, related to the harm of the herbivore or the carnivore to their animal or it may be a poaching activity but while examining while doing the examination or analysis of such thing it takes long time for us to come across the uh, come up, come across the exact etiology of the cause uh, etiology of the case so in that case we need if animal biotechnology department can work with the wildlife veterinarian to solve all these cases and if we could develop rapid diagnostic kits for the future that will be a way um, uh, more valuable for us to solve the cases again the disease diagnosis uh, aspect we have a rapid disease diagnosis kit for bacteria viruses and hemoprotozoa but still there spe the species which are found in the animals are in the wild animals are somewhat different than the domestic animals we have a kits for the domestic animals definitely they are working good they are we are using it no problem but if we develop such, such uh, techniques for the wild animal would have been a great help for the uh, animal wildlife uh, wildlife conservation again hormonal kit pregnancy diagnosis kits for the wild animal birth and reptile it is very difficult for us to determine the sex in monomorphic birds and reptile so if through animal biotechnology at this moment if we could discuss the sex uh, discuss the way forward for the sex determination development of sex determination kit for such kind of birds animals uh, reptile that will be again helpful for the uh, whole country and whole uh, world miscellaneous things such as embryo transfer technology cry preservation stem cell therapy and vaccines new drug delivery system can be used in wildlife the utt is very 
well known technique and and very um, uh, commonly used in domestic animal we if we could think of using this uh, this technique for the wildlife uh, would be again helpful to save the endangered species same with the cryo preservation same with the stem cell therapy and again vaccine development we still are lacking in the vaccine development and uh, we need to uh, uh, think of the development of the new vaccine in terms of the uh in terms or in aspect of the domestic animal as well as the wild animal or at, or in or for the diseases which are zoonotic and new drug delivery system we are again using a traditional tranquilization gun blow pipe and jab sticks and all other thing if through biotechnology uh we can use if uh, or we can develop a new drug system, delivery drug delivery system in the animal or that will be again the very helpful for wildlife conservation if we if we can think about the drug delivery system and the drug which can have a minimum half life of 7 days or 14 days in that case we need to inject those drugs for once in a 7 days or 14 days uh, to those wild animals that will reduce the stress on the animal that will reduce the uh, mortality or even uh, capture myothelic condition in wild animals so that will again the that is again the point of uh, discussion and in the innovation so now all these wildlife conservation activities can be done through the joint approach with the collaboration field oriented research and field oriented requirement education and awareness and symbiotic use of infrastructure and resources we at the moment uh, don't have uh, uh, enough equipment and instrument to do all the field research all the uh, work related to the sampling in that case if some laboratory like uh, animal uh, biotechnology department uh, if they can provide us uh, equipment and instrument in, and if we could uh, if we can provide them sample if they process the sample in that condition we can definitely use the resources in a better manner and we can use the uh, uh, infrastructure and resources in a symbiotic manner for the better development and better growth of the both the both the department wildlife uh, veterinarian also can do the better through that and animal biotechnology department can also do that so overall the foremost important thing is the zoonosis again the and one health management concept the one health ma management concept the one health concept it is the animal health human health and environmental health at present we are we as a wildlife veterinarian trying our best to preserve the species to save the each and every individual of the endangered species through various approaches whether it is tranquilization whether it is wildlife uh, uh, human wildlife conflict mitigation measures we are trying our best to save each and every individual of each and every uh, species of the endangered animal at the same time we need help of the other um, uh, human resources uh, to uh, to come uh, to come to the final uh, uh, conclusion that if we uh, do symbiotic relationship in terms of management all these activities that will give us a better result in future thank you thank you thank you dr chetan Thank you for such an amazing talk. We here duly appreciate your role and efforts in the welfare of not only animals but mankind. Your your presentation was an eye opener to us, and thank you for walking us through a new avenue today. Thank you once again. The now we can have some questions. Hello, Doctor Chetan. Yes. So, uh, what was that uh, wire, na? Because of that, that wound uh, on the tiger. 
So that is that is the clutch wire actually, which is very oftenly and routinely used for by the poachers for the for the capture Cl of the. The hey, clutch wire. Yes, yes. The nowadays actually, sir, they are using clutch wire because the tiger or, other, or any other animal they can chew up the nylon rope or rappling rope. So nowadays, very commonly, they are using clutch wire, and that to be the very high strength clutch wire of the trucks. <laughs> Chetan, a wonderful talk. Uh, thank you so much. Happy veterinarian day for you also. So uh, one question is on the cardiomyopathy that you are talking about during uh, captivation. So how do you deal with that for herbivores? Uh, do you uh, change your doses or uh, you anesthetize with something else along with your dart? How do you tackle it? You are new to think. Uh, Ma'am, we use uh, chemical immobilization, and with with the chemical immobilization, actually, we prefer to use the drugs which are uh, which causes cardiac myopathy. First of all, the in for cardiac myopathy, we we uh, we can see that uh, we could uh, do that. There are two three conditions are there. First is the hypoxia, lack of oxygen. Second is the metabolic acidosis. And uh, third is the muscle degeneration. To prevent all these three conditions, we use soda, soda, soda bicarbonate intravenously to uh, maintain the blood pH alkaline or uh, to avoid the metabolic acidosis. Second, to, for the hypoxia, we use oxygen, oxygen in a high, uh, high flow to avoid the hypoxia. Third, for the, to avoid the muscle degeneration, we use the combination of vitamin A, E and selenium. So they are there to prevent the muscle degeneration and to set, to avoid the setup of the myocardial degeneration. So with this kind of techniques, we have and we release the animal as soon as possible. And with all these conditions, like we all these uh, precautions, we can prevent the cardiac myopathy. Dr. Chetan, thank you so much for the wonderful talk. So I can see here in the last slide, the last few slides, you wanted a you have extended your uh, you know. Uh, scope that uh, you need the biotechnologists to come forward to you know generate certain you know diagnostic kits or you know some kits that can help you in so my question is that you know you are talking about this embryo sorry this pregnancy diagnosis kit that you want to have for various animals right yes uh, ranging from reptile to mammals and all that right yes uh, so uh to be very honest, you know, they, they, there is a very different physiology between these animals, right? Yes, and yes, the, the, the hormone profile, I mean, there must be already existing kit in the market because recently uh, there was a kit which was released from uh, uh, Buffalo Research Institute, you know, uh, for pregnancy diagnosis. It came in the newspaper. Yes. So uh, those kind of kit, which they they are claiming to have been costing only ten rupees, uh, uh, uh you know, uh, for the the kit to do a uh, test. So, did you ever tried using some of these existing uh, kit? I mean, I know human doesn't work because HCG is not a very uh, prime, uh, you know, hormone for most. Uh, but there are already existing some of these kits that you tried in in your zoo or uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are for canine and feline. We are all, we are already using it. The, those which are available in the domestic uh, for the pets and uh, pets, cats and dogs, we are using same kit for the uh, uh, wild animals actually, and it is giving good result. For hemoprotos also, we are using it. So we have a certain like certain species like uh, rhinoceros or elephants where we we need to wait for a couple of months actually, mm -hmm. and uh, in that case, if we could. Do, develop such kind of uh, cases and um, few species such as zebra, wild ass, then horses, they share common physiology. If we could uh, uh, develop some technique to, you know, uh, to monitor such uh, pregnancy and all other things, then that will be really helpful for the wildlife veterinarians. And uh, yeah, okay. I understand your point, but Yeah, yeah. So I was coming to that. See, uh, I have worked with wild animals for almost now seven, eight years. The problem with the Wildlife Protection Protection Act 1972 is that it doesn't allow you to 
interact or directly collect the sample from the animal, right? right. No invasive sampling can be done from these animals, right? You can yes. only depend on the cat sample or the fecal sample which is lying around. And yes. uh, in Lacons, there has been a scientist who's been working on these hormone profile of yes. these animals and trying to, you know, develop some of these kits. Yes. So if you're looking for a kit which at real time work with the pregnancy diagnosis with elephant, zebra, rhinoceros, and you know, you do have to provide a complete uh, blood uh, blood to us at a different time point so that, you know, we can actually have a, a picture of the hormone changes with respect to normal stress cycle as well as with respect to the pregnancy, you know, so that, you know, a kit is designed, uh, maybe a, a LFA or something, which can actually, you know, uh, uh, can be extrapolated in the field condition for the pregnancy. Because you know that there are a lot of false positive, which is quite possible in getting from these kids. And you don't yes. want to have certain kind of a kid which gives you a false hope that, you know, that animal is pregnant. And it is very embarrassing in the later half to know that, you know, you said something as a veterinarian, your word is taken as a gold standard in many places. And I, and I agree with that, right? Yes, yes. That is the limitation that we as a biotechnologist have is the difficulty in getting those samples from your end. Okay, sir, I, I will discuss with uh, Dr. Himaishu Patil because we have, uh, we are, we are uh, encouraging all these things. Whatever you are saying, it's uh, definitely a point of uh, point that is that has to be highlighted with uh, higher authorities. But at this point also, we are encouraging all these things with the local institute also. If I could provide the sample or our group could provide the sample to you, we'll definitely work with you, sir. Thank you so much, Chetan. Yes. Nice talk, uh, Dr. Chetan. Uh, it's not a question, but I would uh, rather would like to have an opinion on this. So okay. regarding this uh, new cheetah project. Yes, sir. Right. So how do you see the uh, you know, a greater or a big picture of this uh, new rehabilitation of a large carnivorous from our intercontinental rehabilitation? Uh, uh, because yeah. few yes. uh, uh, I think wildlife scientists had an had a reservation of introducing this cheetah from Namibia or South Africa to India, but even though uh, our government went ahead and uh, you know could get these uh, cheetahs from uh, South Africa and Namibia, so how do you see you know, this project? Sir, um, the first of all, the, the the concern was for the disease transmission that uh, is eliminated with the quarantine and all other procedures. Second, with the relocation and rehabilitation of these cheetahs to the India, the foremost threat is the to these animals is the leopard and other carnivores. To in my opinion, leopard is way more stronger. It will kill the cheetahs in the free ranging, and it will be difficult for them to survive. First of all, if we gradually give them a very safe environment, then they can propagate or uh, we can um, they can breed in the, that environment. Otherwise, it will be very difficult for us to maintain that population, viable population in that area particularly. And now also we already lost two cheetahs and one is already out of the enclosure. It will be again out of 20, all, all three, three are already gone. It, is, it will be very difficult for us to maintain the viable population in future without, uh, without uh, giving protection. The free and whatever the population is there, that may survive in the small area, but it will be very difficult, in my opinion. Okay, but this mortality is within the limit of expectation, I think. That's what um, wildlife scientists have mentioned, because of two, two mortality we have, isn't it? Yes, but mortality, sir, of, uh, of those two chitas were related to some disease, actually. So that is all right. But if they, sir, but with the mortality, we got three more, I think, three chitas, actually. So the number is uh, is equal. That is not an issue. That happens with the, every captivity and every uh, relocation and rehabilitation. The number, the equal number comes and equal number goes off. But um, without protection, it will be very difficult to, like, they will not be totally wild. We'll have to monitor them. We'll have to safeguard them at every moment. 
what we did for the tiger conservation project and all other thing when we will have to do same thing for them at each and every moment 24 by 7 365 days otherwise it will be difficult for them to survive yeah that means uh, we should not allow the large predators to be there in the kunal national yes. park mm. yes sir and uh, okay and what else uh, is it, do you see the future of such uh, intercontinental rehabilitation for large carnivores? Uh, sir, we have very limited area, very packed. I don't think so. It is uh, for the cheetah, of course, it is, it is a, a species with very few numbers and very like uh, the very small area that is viable. But for the other species, it is very difficult, sir. We uh, I don't think so. It is uh, viable for the large scale. Uh, uh, large scale development but small scale is okay it's as good as the at it is as good as the open protected safari only sir that is not more than that anything okay thank you and just uh, one yeah. so hello dr jayatan that was fantastic work basically uh, I have a small question because you deal with a lot of wildlife and wild animals day to day activities in your life because uh, at the same time you may get exposed to a lot of zoonotic diseases and other, uh, you know, infections. Yeah. What are the basic precautions you usually regularly take in your lifestyle and uh, how do you deal with all these problems? Sir, for most important is uh, zoonosis is for most important and whatever carcass I have performed the necrosis, necropsy or postmortem examination till date of the ill or sick animal, I got tuberculosis cases. So it is the foremost important the animal in the, whenever we are dealing with the wildlife, TB cases and the brucella cases or the zoonotic disease cases are very high. So whenever we approach such, such animals, I usually prefer to wear all the protection measures, protective kits, and usually wear three, four gloves over one over another for the prevent of for the uh, prevention of the contamination. Second thing, while in sampling also, we handle it with very precaution and um, disposal part actually we do with proper precaution. Chemical uh, chemical method, burning method, we use everything. Even in the zoo premises. Whenever we are dealing with such cases, we take utmost precaution to avoid uh, a contamination. Second, sir, uh, um, uh, the diagnosis part. Whenever we we are, we, we are we go for the precautionary diagnosis test, like TB in Brucella in humans as well as in the animals. If, if we get positive cases, we definitely go for the treatment and quarantine measures for them. And for most important to like we we use protective gifts for each and everything sometimes it is not possible to use like in case of field all these things but in that case also we try to avoid contact with each and everything by each and everyone so one person at a time will do the work and other will just do observation from the distance like that just an extension of so for which disease you are looking for some kids or sir, rapid diagnosis. Sir, rapid. Uh, particularly, sir, uh, uh, hemoprotozoan diseases in wild animals and uh, some uh, zoonotic diseases, actually, like TB okay. and Brucella, Leptospira. So, and all these cases are very common and very specific. specific. We, if we go with the sloth bear, Leptospira is very common. We, if we go with the herbios, uh, tuberculosis is very common, sir. And um, uh, and with the cat species also, TB, then toxopla toxoplasma, jo uh, the parasite, it is very common. So we need uh, the kids which are, uh, um, for the diseases which are common and zoonotic. And definitely if it is possible for the pregnancy diagnosis and other part, that is another, that will be additional things. Yeah, thank you. Very, I mean, good to know that because uh, whatever disease you have mentioned, we have scientists working on each of these diseases, so I think we'll be uh, we'll be happy to provide you this disease diagnosis in that respect. So, for most important at present in the field for the field veterinarians, whenever they go for the postmortem examination, we get a carcasses, decomposed carcasses, and uh, decayed carcasses. In that case, if we could develop some kits, kits to the, um, for the diagnosis of uh, 
uh, common poisoning, which are very common, like I, I, as I mentioned, urea poisoning, pesticide, insecticide poisoning, that will be again the very um, um, like good help for the each and every veterinarian who is working with the wildlife and uh, to a certain extent to the domestic animals also. Dr. Chetan, very nice talk and uh, very nice work that you are doing. I have like uh, this is a uh, such kind of thing I have never seen. Uh, we, I have seen that a uh, Jew is there, there are doctors, but uh, I have never seen such kind of uh, like uh, such kind of work that you have done to save the life of the animals, even in the birds also. So very nice. Uh, hope uh, such kind of work is being done uh, with that much of vigor and enthusiasm by others also at other places. So uh, uh, do you have a laboratory facility at your place? In the yes, sir. yes, sir. We have a laboratory. So nowadays, what what I assume that uh, most of the places uh, like PCR is available, and uh, why why do you think that always a rapid test will be uh, useful for you? Because if you collect the samples from some place, like if uh, the carcass is decomposed or uh, you observe some toxicity cases in like. You will definitely treat most of the time uh, you will capture the animal and that will be in the in very close premises so you can collect the samples and uh, you can do pcr but yes. so is it possible for you to do a pcr kind of test or you want everything in that like rapid platform where you just add the sample and get the result no sir pcr is also we are procuring sir pcr this time and uh, we it is under process only but sir, mm -hmm. uh, the rapid kits are for the field veterinarian, those who are those who don't have even the sample collection vials actually in the rare interior areas and something like that. So that time, uh, the definitely the rapid kit will be uh, beneficial. And for the for, to run the PCR, sir, we need a, a proper human resources, proper human resources in in terms of the uh, technician and a proper vet or a biotechnology person, something like that. So again, the rapid diagnostic kits can be used by anyone at the place. That is the, that is that that was the focus. Otherwise, mm -hmm. sir, PCR and all the uh, facility need a proper laboratory, and it is very difficult to establish all those facility at each and every place. So, in my opinion, sir, the rapid would be beneficial for the way more uh, in way more numbers than the PCR. Definitely, sir, for PCR, we are sending samples to the IBRI, CCMB, Hyderabad, and all other institutes, mm -hmm. uh, which are recognized by the government, but still takes a little bit more time than the requirement. So if we provide you the kits over there, you can do a test and uh, check whether these kits are working in your samples or not. Like, you must be collecting the samples very frequently from different animals. Yes, yes, sir. we do collect. Whenever, sir, we get, uh, whenever we get chance to tranquilize any animal for treatment purpose or any surgery purpose, we make sure to have each and every sample, and we'll go for testing. We will go for thorough testing of each and everything, including uh, complete blood count, liver function, kidney function, virology, bacteriology, everything. Mm -hmm. And for uh, like for uh, pregnancy in like in herbivores. Do you see any complications in pregnancy? Where is like uh, where you really you are interested in uh, looking at the pregnancy of these animals? Only in those which is endangered, or those uh, like for uh, normal uh, uh, like like in herbivores like deer and uh, antelope. Sir, only sir, endangered species, not every species. Yeah, no, that's what, huh? Yes, sir, not every species. So we have ad lib number of spotted deer and all other herbivores, but yes, yes, some true. species some species we need sir, for it. And in that case, you can collect the samples, right? Blood samples or something from other, like uh, those uh, endangered species. Is it is it possible for collection of serum? Which kind of samples you like will be easy as a wildlife for like for endangered animal? You can't sample always. Like so for, yeah. for us, actually, whole blood is always very, whole blood is always uh, good. Actually, possibly. okay. So that will we need not to centrifuge and it is like we need to collect it and use it. That's it. Okay, very nice talk. Uh, we will be uh, like future. We would like to hear more from you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, yeah, sir. Uh, hello, Dr. Chetan. Yes, sir. So. I am having one uh, curiosity. 
So, Dr. Goyal was asking that, uh, commenting about the samples, huh, that we can't uh, collect directly the tissue the sample. Yes, sir. Because of that wide direct protection. Now, uh, in case, I mean, in case you are having some images, like uh, postmortem images, or what sort of images you are having, some carcass images, whatever, some images, some videos, right? Yes, sir. So, uh, I mean, uh, I can uh, help in this case that, uh, you know, we can easily develop some AI based tool. Okay, sir. For the, you know, if you are having some postmortem images of birds. Sir. If you are seeing some uh, tumors or something, some, some pattern. So, we can easily identify uh, those uh, patterns and some apps or some tools. Some AI based tools can easily be developed. Sir, definitely, but, sir. Uh, but what exactly, actually, what uh, we need, what we, what uh, my laboratory needs, is the is actually the images, images, sir. whatever. I mean, by some videos, some images, or you can send some, you know, something like some voice recordings, some voice or voice samples also. Sir, we we have each and everything. Sam sampling is not an issue. I can provide you thousand samples with. Uh -huh. N number of, of animals, that is not an issue, sir. Just you, sir, we'll discuss with the, uh, uh, means I will, whatever you need, sir, you just tell Dr. Himanshu Patel, I will arrange everything for you. Every sample, video, photograph, recordings, even for that matter, uh, blood sample, because anyway, sir, whatever the blood samples we are collecting during the post-mortem examination or during the tranquilization, uh -huh. if we utilize those samples for the multiple tests, that will be again, it's a benefit for the us, it's a benefit for the biotechnology department, it, it will be beneficial for the whole wildlife fraternity in a one way or another way. So we are ready to give sir, any sample, whatever samples we have, we are already giving it, uh, giving the samples to the other people. We can give it to you also, that's not an issue. Photographs and video, photographs and videographic records are added to the list, whatever you ask that, so we can share anytime, that's not an issue. So uh, I will I will request to the doctor. Okay, sir. Very good, excellent. Thank you. Uh, when you deal with the reptiles, I like saw crocodiles and sometimes also the snake, which kind of anesthesia you use for this animal? Uh, most of the time, uh, we don't need anesthesia. We go for physical restraining. In uh, case of surgical interventions, we use uh, uh, whatever, like uh, xylazin, ketamine, and dextrex medotomidine, anesthesia, injectable anesthesia, plus gas anesthesia. We use isoflurane for the uh reptiles now if we we had a uh, few surgeries last month of the iguana and snakes we use uh, ketamine and uh, isoflurane gas anesthesia for crocodiles we generally don't prefer to give anesthesia we use uh, physical restraining methods only that's why you someone was sitting on the back yes <laughs> on, at, at, at a time four people will sit, four people will sit on the back and they will do uh, necessary rest, uh, restraining okay okay and uh, for uh, like uh, after surgical interventions, you must be prescribing uh, antibiotics to those to them. So, do you observe the same kind of antibiotic works for uh, all these animals, and the same kind of uh, analgesics work for everyone? No, uh, dose rates are dose rates are very much uh, uh, variables, and we use we have formularies. Even uh, as a vet, I cannot uh, keep a, each and every dose of each and every uh, anesthesia medication antibiotics in my mind. So we use formularies and all other things to uh, maintain the dose rates. And accordingly, we get good results. So now in case of iguana, I will just uh, uh, show the iguana. So we used uh, 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 we use feeding tubes actually, the esophageal feeding tube. 
and visophageal feeding tube uh, we use similarly for the other animals also so it with whether animal is taking feed voluntarily or not we can put antibiotic and other medi medication through it very well and uh, like uh, since you have like you have very less time to deal with these animals so how you select the antibiotics for different animals and different affections like okay, uh, so on, on the base you do uh, test the samples and then you yes, select yes. the antibiotics or no so the first the first treatment will be random for herbivore it's always long acting antibiotic long acting analgesic so long acting antibiotics such as oxyretrocycline azathioprine uh, uh long acting penicillins which gives us a uh, cover for the 3 days so at the before injecting antibiotic we take the sample blood sample pus samples whatever the samples are there we go for antibiotic sensitivity test in the laboratory if animal is sensitive to the antibiotic which is given it will be continued or if it is not sensitive or uh, or it is moderately sensitive or resistant then we can change the antibiotic but for the herbivore we go for long acting 3 days antibiotic course and for the carnivores recently uh, we got a injection called as uh, cefovacin sodium the brand name is convenia which has a half life of 14 days single dose it will cover for 14 days but limitation is that it covers only skin part dermal dermal part and the uh, superficial soft tissue not the deep seated soft tissue for that we go for the oral medication if it is carnivore we provide uh, in feed in chicken or the beef or something like that for herbivore it's a concentrate we use uh, groundnut cake and then all, all other antelope feed and all other things we we can give in that also or water based if it required but one shot or two shots will be injectable after that there will be over okay great thank you Hello, sir. Uh, it was a very beautiful talk. Uh, I have a small doubt. Like, uh, when you do the orthopedic surgery to the wildlife animals, like, till how many days will you keep them in your captivity, and when will you release them back? Even if you release, like, they will put pressure on their legs, which will again damage like, their bones. So, how do you deal with orthopedic surgeries when there is a break? Okay. So, uh, the and the first of all the plan is for the treatment of the animal the release part is secondary if animal doesn't uh, uh means uh, bear weight properly or it doesn't move properly it will go in the captivity for the birds definitely birds are very uh, they have a very high bmr and the bone fra uh, fracture in birds heal way more faster than the mammals if mammal is taking or animal is taking 3 uh, weeks or 4 weeks the birds fracture will uh, get uh, um, stabilized in a week or 10 days so in case of birds we we can keep bird for 2 uh, 3 weeks and with the proper physiotherapy and everything we can release the bird after removing the intramedullary pin or plate whatever we use for animals like we had a cases where we could not release the animal those animals who can bear the weight they can go in the wild or those animals or in the even in the zoo in, in case of zoo in the display if those animals are not bearing weight properly if they have pain if they broke uh, their uh, fracture again because of the some some issues like um, un, uh, unwanted weight bearing or unnecessary weight bearing on the in that case also those animals will go in the captivity and may go permanently in the enclosures or in the cages we cannot release those animals unless and until animal we restore the full function of the limbs we cannot release the animal in the wild definitely if it, there is a small fracture or minor fracture or a fracture of a, a small um, uh, part of the bone or some small bone then in that case we, we can definitely take a chance to release those animals in the wild particularly in the carnivores carnivores so unless and until we have complete um, restoration of the moment and the functions of the limbs we cannot uh, release them in case of herbivores and all other animals we can take chance but again those herbivores if we release those herbivores with the intramedullary pin and rod in their bone an animal may eat after a few years in the wild so we it is again we cannot take the chance to release uh, such uh, animals in the wild if that is uh, uh, with the full restoration with the minimal uh, process, processes then 
then we can release those animals. For birds, we can release them very well because we get very early factor restoration. Thank you, Dr. Chetan. It was indeed a very wonderful talk. The number of questions are indicative of our naiveness and the kind of work you do. And you have definitely answered us a lot of questions. People will definitely know more about it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The next talk uh, we will be having by Dr. Baldev Bulati, Director Nivedi. A sir is on his way. He will be here within the next 10 minutes. So either we can wait or we can reassemble uh, within 10 minutes. We'll be having him here. He is on his way. He will be here by 10 minutes. Please. We shall reassemble within 10 minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.